EA6B Prowler. No plane on Earth can really match. The EA6B Prowler has officially been retired from service by the Marine Corps, the last operator of the type. Prowler Sundown has been creeping slowly closer ever since the U.S. Navy retired the aircraft back in July of 2015. The end of the Prowler also marks the end of an incredibly successful legacy for Grumman's A6 Intruder family of aircraft that reaches back six decades. It all began with the UA-2F1, an incredibly ambitious carrier-based strike aircraft with thrust vectoring nozzles and ridiculously advanced computer systems for the era in which it was designed, the 1950s. This aircraft, which first flew in 1960, would be refined into the A6 Intruder, an incredibly heavy-hitting and precise nuclear-capable strike aircraft that could haul laughably large bomb loads deep into enemy territory in atrocious weather and at night while flying at very low level. The A6 entered service in 1963 and went on to fight over in Vietnam for a decade and then on to Libya and Iraq, among other operations, as the decades progressed. Out of the intruder, Grumman and the Navy quickly gave birth to the EA-6A, an electronic warfare variant of the two-seat intruder that was built to jam enemy air defense radars. Just 28 examples of these aircraft were built, with the first flying in 1963. But the concept was a success, and aided by lessons learned the hard way in the dangerous skies of Vietnam, it ushered in the redesigned four-seat EA-6B intruder. The purpose-built, carrier-capable electronic warfare jet first flew in 1968 and entered service in 1971. Over the EA-6B's 48-year career with the Navy and the USMC, it only became more capable and essential. After the retirement of the USAF's EF-111 Raven in 1998, the EA-6B became nearly the sole provider of electronic warfare support for America's air arms with just the Air Force's small EC-130H Compass call fleet, providing limited overlap in capability. As time went on, the Prowler's tricks became more numerous. The Prowler gained the ability to fire the AGM-88 high-speed anti-radiation missile, HARM, to support the suppression of enemy air defenses, said CAD, roll, while also offering jamming support with its ALQ-99 jamming pods. The EA-6B's electronic warfare suite could also be used to jam some communication systems, and towards the end of its career, the Prowler community became quite capable of providing airborne jamming support aimed at disrupting remotely detonated, improvised explosive devices IEEs, that were wreaking horror on American and Allied ground troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. The final ICAPII configured jets, which were what the Marines were flying up until today, are extremely capable aircraft. That upgrade drastically improved the Prowler's situational awareness, ability to communicate, jamming effectiveness, and human-machine interfaces. It was used as a basis for the EA-18G Growler's electronic warfare system development. But according to some of our sources, the ICAPII Prowler could do some things even better than the aforementioned Growler that replaced the Prowler in Navy service. In the last few years, the small handful of remaining USMC Prowlers, still flying even hauled LITENIA targeting pods, acting in the non-traditional overwatch and surveillance role, while also executing their jamming mission at the same time, if need be. In essence, even though the Prowler was a remarkably dated aircraft, it too became a true multi-role platform in the twilight of its career. You can read all about what it is like flying missions in the Prowler firsthand and how it is different from the EA-18G Growler that replaced it in Navy service in this past tell-all feature of mine. With all that being said, the USMC's last Prowler Squadron, Marine Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron 2, or VM-8Q2 Death Jesters, based at Marine Court Air Station Cherry Point, was also saying goodbye to itself along with its mount during a ceremony at the base on Friday, March 8, 2019. The USMC has not signed up to purchase the EA-18G Growler, 
or another dedicated electronic warfare platform of any kind. Instead, the service will decentralize some electronic warfare capabilities across its flying fleet by using bolt-on Intrepid Tiger Pods and MQ-21 Blackjack drones. But let's be clear, these systems, although capable in their own right, do not provide the high-end electronic attack capabilities against enemy air defense systems over broad areas that the EA-6B 